backslide. Well, this is Sunday night class. These are the people. These are the people that come to church, Lord. You know, and uh, and uh, you know, it was almost as if he said, and I'm not hearing it verbally, but I'm uh, out loud. But uh, it's almost like the Lord sat down and said, "Listen, part of your job as a pastor is to teach people so that they can see the things around them." Am I going in and out? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll try. I'm trying to get it right Trying to get it? Okay, he'll work on it. That's fine. Okay, if it don't work, tell me and I'll just turn this thing off and holler at you. <laughs> but anyway, one of the one of the things that it is, I, I get to do for you is I get to teach you so that as you see things going on in other people's lives in the world around about you, you understand. You know? I mean, how many of y'all like saving money when you go to the store? Okay. You know, under, underneath the items, they've got these little tags, you know, and, and, and it ends up, you've got 15 kinds of pinto beans on that shelf, and underneath each one, it ends up telling you what the can costs, and then it breaks it down to how much it is per ounce, right? And if you understand that, how that is, uh, you can save quite a bit of money, can't you? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, because you understand how they're priced, then you understand things to the level that it benefits you, doesn't it? Right? So I'm going to go over some things tonight, not because I've got a whole room of backsliders, but because it'll help you understand what's going on in the world around you. It'll benefit you. I want to read a definition of backsliding. Is also known as falling away and is a term used within Christianity to describe a process by which an individual who has converted to Christianity reverts to pre-conversion habits and or lapses or falls into sin when a person turns from God to pursue their own desires. That's just a book definition. I want to read four verses to you. Jeremiah 3, verse 12. It says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Jeremiah 3, 22. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come into thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 5. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slipping back by perpetual backsliding? People who just keep on repeating that thing. They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And the good man shall be satisfied from himself. Now that's comfort. So I want to help you understand backsliding. Look, little boy looked up at his daddy one day going home from church. He said, Dad, what's a backslider? said, well, son, that's a man who leaves our church and goes over to another church. <laughs> the little boy looked at him and said, but, Dad, what do you call a man that goes from another church and comes to our church? Well, that's a convert, son. That's a convert. <laughs> <laughs> we have some odd ideas about backsliding, don't we? That, the idea of backsliding is mentioned all through the Bible. Uh, Old Testament and New Testament all <coughs> use the word. And that's a word that you don't hear in Baptist churches a lot because, you know, we're those people that believe once saved, always saved. You know, and I'm not talking about being saved and having Jesus in your heart and dying going to hell. That's not what I'm talking about. But you can't tell me from your own experience looking around with your eyes open just a little while. It don't take very long. That people go to church, have an experience with Jesus Christ, get on fire, and then start cooling off sometimes. 
Sometimes they even do wrong. They say things, they do things they shouldn't do. Okay? We've all seen that. I'll tell you something else. If you've been with the Lord any length of time, you've done that. So it's real. So let's help understand that. Help ourselves understand it a little bit. Backsliding basically means to go backwards in your spiritual life. Hosea 4, 4, our text tonight we're going to start with. I've got a number of texts, but I want you to turn to the book of Hosea, if you will. Chapter 4. Hosea, a little bitty, one of the little bitty books in the Old Testament before Matthew that you always lose. You know what I'm talking about? Hosea chapter 4, verse 16. For Israel slided back as a backsliding heifer. What a name to call people of God. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Father, I thank you for this text tonight. Father, I pray that you'll take and open up your, the meaning that you want us to have, that we can learn from your word. That, Lord God, by the preached word tonight, that people will receive something that, Lord God, is new and fresh to them that will help them. That, Lord God, in their personal life, that it, it may apply and help them from backsliding. But, Lord God, it, as they open their eyes, they will gain wisdom through your word as they see things around about them. Lord, bless this time. Have the effect you want it to have. Use your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hosea, he likens a backslider to a heifer. A backslider is like a, a cow that's in a double yoke. I want to paint a picture for you if you can in your mind's eye. Both of those oxen are supported by that, uh, that yoke around their neck. It goes around both of them. <coughs> They're supposed to pull together to drag the cart to plow, to, to work together, move forward. But the backsliding heifer decides to turn and go to the side and go the way they want to go, maybe even stop or even try to physically back up. Of course, the, this hinders not only the heifer's progress, but it also hinders the progress of the other ox and the cart or the plow or the work to be done. Can you see, can you just picture that in your mind's eye? Two animals yoked together, trying to plow a field, and one of them decides to run to the right, turn to the left, and back up, and go back to the barn. Can you imagine the farmer behind them trying to get the job done? Can you imagine the property owner looking at the mess out there in that field? Looked like Herman Foster fell asleep on a tractor or something. <laughs> Jesus told us to take his yoke upon him up and to learn of him. Backsliding is kind of like putting on your own yoke to do your own thing. But you need to understand that as a Christian, when you backslide, you're yoked to other people. You're yoked in a work. You're to pull together. Jesus said to take his yoke. We can't take it and do our own thing. We're supposed to be laboring together for the cause of Jesus Christ. We're to get him closer to us. We're to get to know him more, to learn of him. When one of us backslides, when we stop doing our part, when we stop praying, when we start making devotions, when we stop our giving, when we stop our witnessing, when the church, the church suffers. It's not just the individual. It's the whole church. Ultimately, the cause of Christ itself suffers. So let's take a few
few notes here if we can. Those are that you were taking notes about this message, backsliding. The causes of backsliding, first of all, it starts with spending time with the wrong people. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Or the NIV says, Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. That's God's work. That's not preacher talking. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So when somebody sits down and says, you're hanging out with the wrong crowd, you better watch out. That's not just good, good counsel. That's God's Word. Get you in trouble. 1 Kings says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old. Now Solomon. Solomon wrote, wrote two books, two, two groups of books here. Known as the wisest person that ever lived. Had wisdom, right? And sat down. But look at what 1 Kings, 1 Kings talks about. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. See, David was that man known as, with a heart after God's heart. Okay? And there's son Solomon came along. And it says that Solomon's wives turned his heart toward other gods. He backslid. So other people, people around you, can turn you away from God because you backslide. It's God's word, not, not preaching. Proverbs, another book written by old Solomon sitting there. Make no friendship with an angry man, it says. Brother Carl was talking about this tonight, what he was exhorting us. I already had these notes there printed out. I didn't, I didn't scribble that in. But it says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest you learn to his ways and get a snare to your soul. Wow. Now, elsewhere in the Bible it says that the devil goes around seeking whom he can destroy, trying to snare us, put us in traps. The old proverb sit down and says, don't, don't run around, don't, don't fellowship with an angry person. Or you're going to learn their ways. And by learning their ways, you're going to put a snare to your soul. And that's a harsh description. A snare to your soul. Trapped. Caught. You trap and catch animals to kill them. The devil snared your soul because of an angry man. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Solomon's words over in Proverbs. Don't tell me the people you hang around with don't affect you. Any of you that's walked this road with Christ for any length of time, you understand people affect you. You've seen it happen in your life. You've seen it happen in other people's lives. The Bible teaches us that we become more like the people we spend time with. Wise man once said, a year from now, you're going to be the same person you are right now, except for the books you read and the people you hang out with. You're going to be just like you are right now, except for the books you read and the people you hang out with change you. Solomon, the wisest man in history, and he had a direct re revelation from God if you read his words. Let people turn his heart away from God. Oh, how many times I've seen Christians who were truly devoted to the Lord let someone close to them distract them and cause them to backslide. I know you value them as friends, maybe. You don't want to upset them. You don't want to offend them. You don't want to lose that friendship because you value that. Now, those are good attributes. A soft heart towards somebody, not wanting to offend them, not wanting to lose a friend. Those, those are good attributes, but be careful. Look at them. Maybe they invite you to 
do something on Sunday and interfere with what God has set up in your life. Something to keep you out of church. Something that you don't participate at a fellowship, a Bible study, a prayer meeting. God's given those things for your benefit. Be careful. Don't let someone else determine your sp spiritual altitude. How high do you want to go with God? You want to soar like an eagle or dig like a worm? Don't let somebody else determine how high you go. Spending time in the wrong place can cause you to backslide. It does matter what you see. Lamentation says, mine eye affecteth my heart. What I see affects what goes through my heart and how my heart feels. Psychology at Georgia Southern, we were studying some things and doctors learned that in open, open brain surgery that while the patient's still awake, they do that most of the time with, with brain surgery, they're still conscious. They do local stuff, cut things open so they can get in there, but they take two little electrodes, electronic electrodes, and they can stimulate parts of the brain. And they found out that the steak that they tasted back on their eighth birthday, they could physically taste it laying there in the operating room. The warmth of the sun down at Panama City Beach on a particular vacation, that patient can still feel on their face. Everything that you see, everything you've heard, everything you've tasted, everything you've done in your life, God in His magnificent way created you like Adam with a magnificent brain. Sin has corrupted some of our memories, but God's work still complete, the scientists found out, because it's all still there. Things that people never had recalled before Claimed they had forgotten when stimulated, the doctors found out it's still there. Sin blocks some things. God's work's still perfect. Mine eye affects my heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes, the psalmist said. I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do, and I will have no part in it. David said. Many people think they can go and watch a movie with nakedness and foul language and go down to a beach and look on people that are hardly clothed thinking that it won't affect them, but it will. I'm here to tell you that it'll affect you. Those movies, places you go, the things you see, they're going to affect you at least spiritually. And that's probably the worst way it can affect you. It does matter what you hear. Romans 10.17 tells us that faith cometh by hearing. If faith cometh by hearing, and the devil knows that scripture too, don't you know he uses the truths of God to put things into your ears that will tear you up? If faith cometh by hearing, well, gee, I can inject destruction through hearing too, the devil. I guarantee you he uses that. He knows that creation up here. <clears throat> he knew before the scientists probed in there and stimulated areas and confirmed what God's Word says on how we were created, that God did a marvelous work on Adam, gave him a mind, and knew that everything you see and everything you hear and everything you taste and everything you touch is permanently in there and it's, it's written into your mind. And so the devil knows if I can get them to hear this joke, if I can get them to hear that type of music that's just ungodly, if I can hear them uh, hear this argument, I can destroy part of their life. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The places we go, the people we meet, the things we see and hear all affect our inward person. And that's directly linked to us backsliding. So if we spend time in the wrong places, or <coughs> we hang out with the wrong people, we start developing the wrong passions or desires. Revelations 2.4 says, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left 
thy first love. Talking about a church. He wanted to talk to them about their spirituality. You see, they were correct with their doctrine. They were correct with their practice. But they left the honeymoon of Jesus. That's really the main cause of backsliding. Misplaced priorities concerning people and places that lead to a declining passion for the Savior that bought you with His very life, His blood, saved you from sin. Backsliding. Misplaced priorities. Replacing the passion in your life for the price that Jesus paid for you. Would you rather watch television than spend a moment with God in Bible reading and prayer? How about, would you rather go and play some sport than be in your place at church? Would you rather for people at work not to even realize you're a Christian? All these signs are cooling love for Christ. <coughs> these are signs that you're already in the process of that life. <coughs> you need to get your passion back for God. Return to that first love that you felt as a young Christian. You know what I'm talking about? Ready to charge hell and all you got is a wet hanky. I don't know what's going to happen today, but somebody's going to hear about Jesus. Somebody's going to accept Christ. I don't know what else is going to happen today, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to smolder out some of the ashes of hell today. That passion that you used to have. The determination. If you have that, you're not backsliding. You see, backsliding, it begins in the heart. Long before you ever get completely out of church or do something that we really call sinful, backsliding has already begun in the heart. Psalm 78 really is a condensed version of the book of Exodus through Deuteronomy. Take your time sometimes and read Psalm 78. I'm not going to read that, 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 that chapter. But verse 37 in particular of Psalm 78 gives us a clue as to why we backslide so many times. For their heart is not right within him. That's the key to backsliding. Their heart wasn't right. That's where it starts. You keep your heart right with God, You won't have so many issues in life. Everything you do on the outside is influenced by what's on the inside. Somebody comes up in conflict to you, the Bible says that a soft answer turneth away wrath. And I, I've seen that happen before. Okay? I mean, do I want to take and knock somebody's nose off the side of their face sometimes? Oh, yeah. But you see, there's a master in my life, and luckily it's not me. And he says, no, you don't do that. He says, the soft answer will do, Steve. Yeah, but I'd like to cuss this man out. But give him a soft answer. And it works. I've seen God take and, and, and take something that would have just absolutely destroyed things and turn it around and you can lock arms and go back into battle with that person and know that you're a proven element in their life and they're a proven element in your life too. You can depend on them. It's a stronger relationship if you follow God's word and follow his way. But if you do your own thing, that what, what, what the flesh wants to do, you'll destroy that and it'll never return. Long before you leave church, walk out on God, it begins in your heart. In fact, it fills every part of your life. The Bible tells you that it'll be full of that deceit. Either you're going toward God or you're backsliding. You're going backwards. If you continue going backward, you're going to get more and more into things that you said you'd never do. You'll see people that have stood up and made a testimony of where they're heading for Christ and, and something starts going sideways in their life and all of a sudden you see them doing things that they, they claim they would never do. It'll happen to you. It'll happen to me if we start backsliding. 
That's what's going on in their life. That's what happened in your life. If you stay back slitting long enough, there's going to be a time when people will even laugh at you when you try to go up and talk to them about Christ. That's what happened to Lot. Lot moved off to Sodom and Gomorrah and was living in that life, <coughs> enjoying the benefits, quote unquote, of that, those cities and everything. And when it came time that the Lord was going to destroy that city and he went to his neighbors and tried to talk to them about God, he got laughed out of that city. You backslide long enough and the world that you were to minister to will laugh at your face when you bring up Christ. The backslidden life, it destroys your testimony. <coughs> The Bible teaches that the path of backsliding is, a, is progressively worse. What I mean is, it's not just a steady decline. But as you start, you're up here with Christ and everything's alright, and you start your backslide, and it does this. It accelerates. You might be able to swim with five pounds on your back, but as you backslide and 10 pounds are there, and well, I can still keep my nose above water, preacher. And you keep backsliding and now there's 15 pounds and 20 pounds. And you'll struggle and struggle and struggle and before you know it, you no longer can breathe the air because you're below the surface. And it'll descend you so quick you won't even see the light from above. Maybe you can't find your way back. Psalms 1-1. One, one. I'll get your Bible. Run, turn over the Psalms. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Hmm. Blessed is the one that does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or take the seat in the company of those that laugh at God. Mockers. Scornful. So not only do you have the strength of God Almighty coursing through your body because you're whole and not backslidden, but it said you're blessed when you don't sit with those people and stay in those places. How many of y'all want to be blessed? You want to live a blessed life? You want blessings? Psalm 1 1. Blessed are those that don't hang out with the wicked. And then don't go to the places where those that mock God stay. Blessed. Consequences of backsliding hurts themselves. A backslider hurts themselves. Galatians chapter 6 says, Be not deceived. God is not to be mocked whatsoever you sow. That you're going to reap. Wow. That's a mouthful, really. Could be a whole message there. Don't be deceived. God's not going to be laughed at. He's not going to be mocked. You sow evil, you're going to reap evil. You sow good, you're going to get good. You sow, you sow ministry, you'll be ministered to. You sow goodness, goodness is coming your way. God will take care of you. You'll be blessed. If you backslide, you hurt yourself spiritually. You drag yourself down. You hurt your testimony with others just like Lot did. You get laughed at when you bring up Jesus. Backsliders result in spiritual dead deadness. Proverbs tells us there's a way that appears to be right, but the end, it leads to death, to destruction. Backsliding. It, oh, it looks okay. Going 
going down to the river, having a party on Sunday when I'm supposed to be in church. What's happening? Your place isn't filled in church. You've got a place. God let you here. God put you there. God blessed you with the people around you. And you you abandoned them. You backslidden. And your place is empty. You shouldn't have your place empty. Right. Amen. Yes. When the roll is called up yonder, I'm going to be in my place. Yeah. My goodness. These Christians that walk around and think they're going to heaven, if they've got Jesus in their heart, they're going to bust glory open. When they go into eternity, they're going to bust heaven wide open. But I'm going to, I'll tell you what. If it, I believe there's going to be laughter in heaven. You, you think there's going to be some laughter? i tell you what. I'm going to be over there slapping at some of them who don't know how to walk right because they've never been around the crowd marching. And I'm going, yeah, I wish you to work. I tried to tell you to get in church and learn some of this stuff. Learn how to celebrate. Now we're sitting there. When the roll is called up under, I'll be there. When the saints go marching in, okay? And you out of step. Look at that. I'm going to be snickering at them. <coughs> be glad they're there. But you'll hurt yourself. You're also going to hurt others. Jonah's the story of a backslider. Old backsliding preacher. The old preachers can backslide too. Jonah was a preacher, right? He was called to go into Nineveh, go preach to those people. Okay? He said, no, Lord, I'm not going to do it. He backslid. He refused to do what God wanted him to do. He didn't do what God wanted him to do. He didn't do it God's way. He ran. He backslid. Running away to, running away to Tarsus, right? On the old boat. He thought he was getting away. God sees all that stuff. But backsliders, they affect everybody around them. Just like sin does, because backsliding is sin. Those sailors, those unbelievers that was on that boat with him, got in a storm. Just knew they were going to die. Until the old preacher came up and said, I'm your problem. I've been running from God. I'm a backslider. If you'll throw me over, God will take care of you this and save you. A backslider will destroy other people's lives. You see? You just think, you just think, you get a, you get a child, a little six-year-old child, be a good age to pick on. You go over here to the gun store and you, you talk to Mr. Broom over there at the gun store. And you go buy this 444 rifle. Big old slug, big old bullet, about that long. Huge thing. Get you a Marlin lever action 444. You put a couple shells in that thing, cock that thing down, go, and you go out to the range out there, and you get earmuffs on, put them on that six-year-old, and you blow a hole in that target, and he sees splinters flying all over the place and paper going all over, and a big grin rips across his face. And you go, hey, you want to shoot this thing? You put that 444 on that child's shoulder and let him pull the trigger and rip his shoulder apart and damage him. You see? You don't leave children that way. A responsible adult might take that child out to the range. But when the child says, can I shoot it? Can I shoot it? You go, no. You're too small. It'll hurt you. You don't ever touch this thing. Put that gun away so that child can't get to it. Put the ammunition someplace where the two are separate. Lock that thing Take care of it. <coughs> what are you doing? You're sitting there saying, I can go do stuff, but you can't. And it, it confuses that child. You expose that child to that kind of thing, it'll confuse that child. And what happens when that child starts playing with that gun? They've sat there, they've watched you take that ammunition. They've watched you load that thing. They've watched you pull the lever down and back up and the hammer comes back. And they've seen you shoulder that thing and point it and pull the trigger. What happens when that child gets in areas they're not supposed to be? As a Christian, what happens when you get in front of a young Christian going places you're not supposed to go, doing things you're not supposed to do? And they go, that looks like fun. They're doing it. I can do that. What if they did? 
it can damage them. Backsliders hurt themselves but they hurt other people. You can hurt your children, the children around you, both physically and spiritually. They're going to be a they're going to be affected by backsliders. People that lay out a church and teach them that it's okay to lay out a church, the children watch that, then they don't want to come to church. They want to watch Disney like I used to do when I was a kid. I wanted to watch that show. But I had to go to church. Mama made me go to church. I missed all those things. I even faked getting sick. I even learned that if you took a match and put it under a thermometer while Mama was out of the room, that you'd give yourself a temperature. But she knew that my temperature wasn't 200 and something. You know what happens whenever you fool your mama like that? And you lie to your mama? There's a big metal can called castor oil. <laughs> and I had a couple doses of that stuff. And I never lied about my fever again. I had a good mama. But you, you can destroy children by leading them wrong, by backsliding around them. Tell them it's okay. It's, a, it's the same lie that the devil used in the Garden of Eden. Oh, the day you eat that apple there, Eve, you're not surely going to die. God wouldn't do that to you. You can go over to the ballpark on Sunday and skip church. You're not going to hell for that. Same lie, isn't it? You're not going to die right now. Your backslide. Eve and Adam, when they ate of that fruit, when they did outside of what God wanted them to do, it changed their lives, didn't it? It wasn't good, was it? We don't realize sometimes the amazing influence that we have in other people's lives. But people are watching us. People that are looking at us to set an example so that they can follow will be hurt if they see us backslide. Some will be disappointed in us. Some of them will be discouraged by us. Some, unfortunately, are actually going to follow us. If they don't see us at church on Sunday night or Wednesday night, they may not see the importance of being faithful to church. If they see us in the wrong places, they just may think it's okay for their, them to go there too. People hurt themselves. They hurt, they hurt the people around them, but they hurt the church. Backsliders, they hurt the church. Our church suffers from any member uh, when they suffer. If anyone is sick spiritually, it's like a part of your body that's been sick. You see, I've had an earache since this morning. Got a little bit of hurt, nothing bad, but it hurts. And all day long, my brain has been saying, your ear hurts, your ear hurts. And it affects my personality, it'll affect how I think, how I recall things, okay? A little earache. Not a bad one. When somebody's in our church to sit, they're backslidden. The whole body feels it. You don't have to cut the little toe off for the body to realize they are under pain. A little earache, a toothache. Now, just, they're still there. They're just a little sick. Just a little fever. Just a little bit wrong. Oh, they're, they're here most of the time. Preacher, it's okay. No. If they're in a backsliding condition, remember that curve? It's not this way. It's this way. It accelerates. But when they're sick, the church feels it. Jesus said, we're all one body. <coughs> we're all members of one body. And when one is missing, the body knows, yeah. The stories, the illustrations I've always heard in sermons is, well, you take, you take your little finger and cut it off and the whole body hurts, right? Well, that's true. But what if you just smash that fingernail with a hammer? Finger's still there. But is the body still hurting? 
If we just hurt a little bit, if we just backslide a little, we affect the whole church. We are to be the salt and the light to a dying world. Even one backsliding member hinders our mission as salt and light bearers to this world. It hurts our unity. It hurts our effectiveness. It hurts our meetings. It hurts in every way imaginable. Not just a little. This evening I want every one of us to evaluate our life. I want every one of us to look at around us what's going on and get wise. Take tonight's message, the text that we read tonight, the scriptures, and apply them to your life. Whatever's in your heart is going to come out. <coughs> if you're in a backslidden condition, draw close to Jesus. You'll fix it. You'll be all right. If it's under the blood, you're okay. You don't have to destroy your own life because you've backslidden in some time and say, well, I'm not worthy to do that because I used to do such and such. Paul used to murder all the Christians. But the grace of God was able to redeem him and all oh, the work that Paul did because he put it under the blood. He got sold out. He gets sold out. Church, don't be backslidden. If you look in the world around you and you know, brother so and so over there, that such and such church over there, and, and they, they've done something, they've done something wrong, they said something wrong. You can be discouraged, right? Because backsliders can discourage us. Okay? But use wisdom now and understand, pray for that person. You don't need to destroy them. They're in trouble. Or to reach out. Love them. Pray for them. We need to use wisdom and do it God's way. I don't know if you've ever not done it God's way. I've done it sometimes on my own and not God's way and the way God says in His Bible. And I've always, it's always messed up got to be in such a mess. But every time I've done it the way God tells me to do it, it works out. And going into it, I sit there and say, Lord, that ain't going to work. They need a hit in the head. He says, no, you do it this way. And every time I've done it the way God tells me to, it works out. It's okay. He says, love one another. He says, be a body of unity. If you find your brother in, in fault, go to him and pray and restore him. He not say cut them off, throw them in a fire. He says, go and lift them back that they might be restored. Looking around you, if you're backslidden, come back to Jesus. He'll take you back. My goodness, God puked out Jonah on the seashore. He walked back into Nineveh and preached the word and told the people about God and what God wanted. Straightened people out, did what he was supposed to do. If you come back to God, God will come back to you. There's no reason you need to be backslidden. <laughs> Actually, you need to go to the altar get things right. After a message like this, you, you might go to a preacher after that message. I ain't going to be down that altar. Everybody think all this stuff about me. I understand that. Okay? But you can handle this tonight. Somewhere you get alone in your carport or in your bedroom, living room, and just you and God. You're all close to Him. Put it back under the blood of Christ. You're backslidden. 